What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. Now this video I could see already, shots fired, shots fired. Mark's talking trash again, starting drama, not in the least. It is my duty as a supplement manufacturer and an influencer on social media to alarm you when you're getting ripped off, to alarm you when an ingredient not only will not live up to its claims, but might actually hurt your performance. Now a couple weeks ago when I saw some companies come out with, a, with products containing an ingredient called inosine. My initial reaction was this is insane, but I initially thought nobody could possibly come out with this ingredient without there being new research. Now inosine was initially discovered in the 1970s and I remember looking into it in the early 2000s. I quickly realized that not only was it not good, but it actually could be deleterious or could hurt your performance based on data. Do I believe it's gonna kill your performance Eh, probably not. Do I believe it's not gonna help you? 100% without a shadow of a doubt. It is not gonna help you. Not only that, I've seen products with the ingredients in an unscrupulous, just scam artist manner, put the, this ingredient in a proprietary blend. You know my opinion on proprietary blends. It's a really disingenuous and bullshit thing to do. However, it is what it is. So after I saw this, I did a quick little story on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Mark Lobliner. And I explained why I've never used inosine and why you should avoid this ingredient. Rather than taking the time to research, and I already had the research, I've already read the research. But we have the best writer in the industry at Tiger Fitness. His name is Robert Shinetsky. And Robert Shinetsky is not only a great writer, he's a freaking genius. And he's the best guy I know at taking data and presenting it to the masses. Now I'm gonna link it down below but you need to read this article because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a lot of this article, then add some of my, my input. The things I'm not gonna read in this article is what inosine is supposed to do, why it does it. I'm just gonna go over the data, and I would like to state for the record, for any company that manufactures inosine, I would like to invite you, we'll figure out a date, but basically name the date, name the time. I will fly you all expenses paid first class, to Loveland, Ohio, which you'd fly into Cincinnati, and I'll put you up at a hotel nearby, and we can do a debate. Myself, you, a scientific representative of your company, and Robert Shinetsky. I will put that on the line right now. So if I am incorrect, debate me in person, or as you've heard on Dr. Phil, catch me outside. How about that? Here we go. So we're gonna go over what is in a sign and what it does. In a scene, in a sign, potato, potato, whatever. It's a purine nucleoside formed when hepaxanthine, another purine compound, binds the C1 carbon of ribose via the beta N9 glycosylic bond. Here's the bottom line. I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff. The bottom line is it, re it results in the dephosphorization of ATP, cellular currency of exercise. Structurally speaking, ATP is simply an RNA nucleotide with a tail comprised of three phosphate groups. Now I could bore you with this or you get straight to the research and per exercise performance. Let's go into study number one. As I said, it was originally considered as a means to boost exercise performance by Eastern sports scientists in the 70s. Um, suffice to say, there's been a lack of research regarding innocent and exercise performance, despite claims made by some in the fitness community. However, in the late 90s, again, I looked at it in the early 2000s after these studies were conducted, I realized that these studies showed me enough that this ingredient is garbage I can't believe that in 2018, somebody is actually promoting this as a secret magical awesome ingredient. It is not only insulting, but it is scamming people. So here's the thing, the first study in the potential ergogenic effects of inosine involved nine highly trained endurance runners in a double blind placebo controlled crossover study. Each subject combined, con consumed an inosine supplement six grams per day for, or, for two days or placebo. The problem with the dosing mentioned in the studies is the product that I'm referencing has no dosing listed because it's a proprietary blend. So you're getting scammed on both ends. The good news is you might not be getting much inosine, which is a piece of crap ingredient anyway. So researchers, so basically they then perform three exercise tests consisting of a submaximal warm-up run, competitive three mile treadmill run, and a max treadmill run. They measured VO2 max, time to exhaustion, oxygen uptake, ventilation, respiratory exchange ratio, and rating of perceived exertion as well as hosts of other metabolic markers. At the conclusion of the trial, researchers documented no improvements in max treadmill run versus uh, max treadmill run, time three mile run, VO2 max, or any significant metric they recorded. 
In fact, when the runners consumed the placebo, researchers noted that their time to exhaustion was actually better than when they took the inosine supplement, suggesting that inosine supplementation actually impairs performance. So the research concluded, based on our data, we conclude that inosine is not an effective ergogenic aid to enhance athletic performance of an aerobic nature. In exercise study number two, it involved 10 competitive male cyclists who received either five grams of inosine daily or placebo for five days. Following subjects complete a Wingate bike test consisting of 30 minutes, self-paced cycling performance bout, as well as a constant load, super maximal cycling sprint to fatigue, which would mimic weight training. At the end of the trial, researchers documented there were no significant differences, including those who consumed inosine or placebo across several metrics. Based on these findings, they concluded that inosine supplementation does not appear to improve aerobic performance and short-term power production during cycling may actually have an ergolytic effect under some test conditions. In other words, not only did it not improve exercise performance, it actually reduced performance in some cases. And here's study number three, in case two wasn't enough. Again, for those selling the supplement, I offer first-class plane tickets. I offer full hotel paid. I'll even buy your food. Me, Robert Shinetsky, you and whoever your idiot science guy is, let's rock. I doubt there is a science guy. I hope to God there isn't a science guy. This is almost as bad as Robert Wolf. Okay, so not all, okay, so so. Um, so the third study on inosine supplementation adopts the mindset and had subjects consume 10 grams, not six, 10 grams of inosine. So let's say this, I haven't even looked at what the proprietary blend is. Let's say he puts 10 grams in it. So prior to exercise, seven trained men received placebo and inosine, each dosing phase set by a six week washout period. Supplementation was split between early AM dosing and late PM dosing. Each time they reported for testing, subjects completed three exercise sessions, each comprising three tests five six second sprints and a 30 second sprint and a 20 minute time trial supplementation was carried out in random double blind manner and the exercise sessions were performed at baseline day six and day 11 of supplementations um, blood samples were taken based on performance results supplementing with inosine did not significantly improve average power peak power total work or post-exercise blood lactate level however uric acid concentration was increased significantly when the men used the inosine supplement as a result they concluded that inosine demonstrates no ergogenic effects but it may hurt your health, may lead to potential health complications if taken over long periods of time. So that leads to the health complications. Inosine and gout. Uric acid is a waste product resulting from digestion of foods that contain purines. Remember we talked about purines in the beginning when I briefly went over um, what inosine is. Under normal conditions, uric acid is filtered by the kidneys and excreted through the urine. However, your body cannot properly dispose of uric acid, it accumulates in the blood and leaves a condition known as hypouricemia, hyperuricemia. So high uric acids are the major etiology or cause of gout, a disorder characterized by painful, red hot, swollen, and tender joints. Hyperuricemia also leads to cystic formation, overly acidic urine, and eventually kidney stones. Additionally, several cohort studies have found an association between high uric acid and hypertension, which is high blood pressure. And top it off, some researchers believe high uric acid levels may also play a role in certain neurological diseases. So the same studies demonstrating inosine does not benefit performance shape in any way, shape, or form noted that some inosine supplementation increases uric acid levels in the body. Therefore, supplementing with inosine could lead to hyperuricemia, gout, kidney stones, and or hypertension. In fact, a study using multiple sclerosis patients receiving 500 milligrams of inosine per day noted that 25% of the subjects experienced kidney stones. <laughs> and when they were taken off of inosine and given hydration, the kidney stones were done. So creatine and inosine. This is another thing. Um, creatine depletes the body of inosine, thereby reducing exercise performance, hindering, hindering energy. Now, that doesn't mean because you take creatine, you need inosine. Sports scientists have looked in this and know that creatine supplementation has no effect on muscle inosine phosphate, monophosphate concentration during training, even training at 70 to 80% of VO2 max. In, in fact, researchers noted that supplementing with creatine enhances performance because it reduces the increase in muscle inosine levels. So bottom line is, the reason, one of the reasons creatine won't work is because it reduces inosine. Um, so here's the deal. Should you supplement with inosine to 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 enhance performance. Absolutely not. Steer clear of this ingredient. It is horrible. It not only doesn't increase performance, it actually increased performance. It might actually decrease performance. 
So you're looking at a supplement that's not only benign, but is potentially devastatingly bad for your body, resulting in gout and other conditions. Now, bottom line is you get plenty of this stuff in your food, okay? And if you need, <laughs> I cannot believe some morons put this on the market. I am so disappointed in my industry in general, and I hope to God none of you buy this crap. This is absolute utter garbage. I am all for coming out with something where there's studies showing like glutamine. You know what? Glutamine has its benefits. A lot of studies show it does nothing. A lot of studies indicate it might do something. But glutamine is not gonna decrease your performance. Inosine has been demonstrated to actually, in two out of three studies, decrease performance. And in the other study, it was demonstrated to potentially lead to health issues. So moral of the story, as Robert puts, has no place in pre-workouts, does not enhance performance, and might actually reduce your performance. If your pre-workout contains 40 calories of carbs, along with an undisclosed amount of creatine and inosine, and claims to change the whole industry, leave it on the shelf and don't buy it. To whomever has this ingredient in their product, please take me up on the offer to debate. If you don't, you're a scam artist. I'll even fly to you. Let's do it. Anybody who puts out an ingredient like this and can't read, and then doesn't cite studies, and says that it's in, a, it's in a proprietary blend to hide their knowledge, to hide their intellectual property, the only intellectual property here is that you're stupid. And putting inosine in any, any sport nutrition supplement is irresponsible and just plain stupid. Anyway, click on the article below. It's pretty much what I read here, some opinion in between. That's not a game.